monarchy, oligarchy, or democracy? Which system is best? That's what we're going to be exploring on today's episode of The Living Philosophy, where we look at an argument that Darius the Great had with his co-conspirators two and a half thousand years ago, and we look at the example of Augustus of Rome two thousand years ago. Darius the Great was the second great ruler of the ancient Persian Empire. He wasn't born into this power, however. There was a a usurper on the throne, this is what we read in Herodotus, the first historian's account of it in the 6th century BC. And we we find Darius and these other six co-conspirators, they go to the palace and they assassinate the the imposter to the throne and Darius becomes the, the new emperor. And when they've done this, the seven of them gather together and they decide the fate of Persia and they decide what way to continue forward. And the seven of them have a meeting and they say, well, will we have an oligarchy? Will we have a democracy? Or will we have a monarchy? And different speeches are made in defense of each point, but Darius comes along and he makes a speech in defense of monarchy. He talks about the excesses, he talks about the perfect system, and he says democracy and and oligarchy, there is is no perfect system. There is no, even at their best, they're terrible systems, because you've got people who are infighting, you've got the people, you've got this tug of war pulling things in all these different directions. But monarchy, if you have a good monarchy, if you have a good emperor, then everything is heading in one direction. You've got one man's vision pulling things all in one direction and everything moves very smoothly and very fast in that direction. And so Darius makes this very compelling case for monarchy. And it's this eternal sort of wisdom. There's an old saying about the the, the first Roman emperor, Augustus, that he either should never have been emperor or he should have been emperor forever. Because he was this fantastic emperor. He was a fantastic, he, he brought the, the, the culture, the art, he stabilized the country after such a period of, of civil wars and, and infighting and chaos. He brought a, a stability and a golden age to Rome. And the arts flourished and the economy grew because he, he'd brought such stability and peace to the world. And yet the, the the problem with the monarchy, and it's a very tough problem to get around, because the problem with having this one ruler is how do you choose a good successor? And that's what's captured in that quote about Augustus, that he should have been emperor forever, or never should have been emperor, because you look at the Roman emperors and there are so few of them that are any good. And the, the, the problem is that there's such vested interest and the thing that formed Augustus into becoming a good emperor is hard to replicate in terms of the others. So it's uh, it's it's the, the big question when it comes to the different philosophical theories or the different political theories, it's there's there's a beauty to to monarchy if it if it gets everyone in alignment, if everyone feels like they're part of this greater thing and moving in one direction very effectively, then that can be quite positive, but then the downside is that you'll never get a good enough successor. And if you've got a bad monarch, there's there's almost no worse system because they're they're a nightmare for their people and they're a nightmare for everything and and it's this in, instability and, and war and, and just chaos that, that, that functions and that flourishes underneath a bad ruler. And what you get with democracy is, I guess, it's a a compromise, really. Republicanism more than democracy, uh, because democracy mm, can be another thing again. But to republicanism, the idea of having people who represent your views and these people will pull things different directions, but then out of that, the the greater interest of everyone rather than a single individual's interest comes to the fore, and that can be the positive uh vision for the the counterbalance of of different powers so yeah that's just a a short idea i wanted to explore from from ancient history and perhaps relevant in modern times where things are that are tilting towards uh, chaos yet again and we're seeing the the the, perhaps the disintegration of democracy happening once again so it's a it's an interesting and, and timely kind of idea so i thought i would share that with you today if you've enjoyed it please subscribe if you haven't already uh give us a like down below and i'd love to hear from you down in the comments if you have any thoughts, insights, or feedback. And uh, yeah, otherwise I shall see you next time, guys. Thank you for watching.